So in this video, I am just simply flipping through the binder of artist trading cards that have been collected over the years. Typically when we're in school, I ask that you guys trade away your cards as part of the lesson of understanding what it's like to um, put your heart and soul into a work of art and then to let it go out into the world. So um, over the years, I've accumulated a lot of cards from other students and saved many good quality cards. So here I am flipping through the binder. You can see um, clearly they make this um, set of sleeves so that you can actually slide your cards in and keep them. Um, this card in particular is a foreign exchange student um, who did a really great job. She actually created all three on that top row. This next card that I'm pulling out is from a former art teacher, Janet Cranston from 2012. I asked many art teachers to create cards so that I could keep a card from each teacher. Um, you'll also notice that there's a little set of um, a package that says acrylic paint off to the side. Artist trading cards are actually something you can go buy in um, hobby stores, Hobby Lobby, um, or Michaels carries them in the card section. So if you're ever interested in creating more trading cards, they actually have pre-cut cards and they come in those packages. So again, I'm just flipping through so that you guys can see what other students have done in the past. Um, this student in particular took an old love letter, love note from his girlfriend and ripped it up, and collaged it for the background. Um, and then his subject matter was the anatomical heart. Um, his concentration or theme throughout was the idea of love. Um, this is Miss Francois's card. She actually chose to use negative space in an interesting way and actually cut holes into the card. So quite interesting take on um, the card not necessarily needing to be solid two and a half by three and a half. This is the student that used collage work. Um, she cut all of that tiny, tiny detail out. Um, her set of cards were featured in that very first uh, PowerPoint slide that I showed you guys. So many cards collected over the years. Some of them look familiar from the sets of cards that were shown in the first slide, um, first set of PowerPoint slides that I sent out. When we get on a WebEx call, if anybody's interested in seeing some other cards close up, now that I have these cards, um, you guys can ask to see them close up and I'll pull them out so that you can see others in detail. This one was also a collaged effort and then the colors were mixed to match the magazine images that were found. Some students have done printmaking, some students have done um, pen and ink or marker, uh, watercolor, uh, the sky's the limit. A lot of collage work as well. The more interesting cards are always the cards that tend to have a lot of process behind them, meaning they didn't just draw or paint directly on the card. This one, the student did two layers and then cut with an X-Acto knife, cut that um, insect out for the negative space and then layered something underneath for color. She did the whole three set on the bottom. Really beautiful charcoal details. Compositions are very interesting too. Notice that students aren't always putting the subject matter in the center. So if you started with your first five cards and then um, your second set of five are slightly different, that's a good thing. That shows growth and improvement. That was the student who did the stencil work. She cut the stencil out and spray painted. Again, many years of collecting these cards from students. Um, some you can tell are digital work, some are actual illustrations, mixed media, uh, the sky's the limit. As I get to the back of this collection, what I started doing was having students um, sets of cards printed so that I could save the entire set of cards. Uh, previously, I had only been collecting one card per student but some of the sets of cards started being such high quality that I started printing the entire sets of cards. 
Notice how they photograph their cards. Notice that they're evenly laid out. Their surfaces that they're photographing from are not busy patterned surfaces and the lighting is really well. The angle of the cards is also not tilted. They've taken it from well high above. So that concludes me going through the binder. If you have any questions or want to see any of the cards closer up, I can show them to you on WebEx, but that's it.